Six years ago, we were both uh, interested in mobile innovation. I hosted an event called Mobile Monday, which was actually founded here, at least the organization, um, which was not so dissimilar from, um, uh, from what I'm doing now. It's, it's again a global movement. It's sort of grassroots movement, people interested in doing things themselves. Um, six years ago, eight years ago, we, we started trying to do things with the mobile phone that was just coming out. And um, there was this age when the Nokia N95 was the best phone that we could actually work with. And it had all these features we never seen before of, you know, great quality pictures. And there were exciting times. Um, I became much more interested uh, during the way in like our last Mobile Monday meetups had uh, people, uh, Andrew Hessel on synthetic biology or people on um, all kinds of other non-related topics. And I started, I started wondering what else, you know, was on the front end of, uh, of innovation. And I was really interested in health at that time already. Um, and I had done research on business model theory for hospitals. So I was in this startup culture and everybody, you know, conferences like this, everybody would ask a question, what's the business model? And then people would debate. And uh, I was asking that question to hospitals. And then first they didn't know what a, what a business model was. And the second one, they had no clue how to answer that question. Um, so I started researching and doing that. And, and a lot of people started talking to me about efficiency. Um, but I w became much more interested in whether that question or that answer that they gave was actually really changing anything. I didn't get more healthy from them being more efficient or better or other, you know, other things they were doing. And it turned out that what I was looking for, I found out later, was this movement of people also doing the thing I was already, uh, I had experience with in mobile. And that was quantified self, at least for me. Um, so. Just a very, very short introduction. I, ne I normally, I don't have a lot of slides un unless things go really bad. So if you see a lot of slides for me, something must be wrong. But if you want to get in touch, these are my data. Um, I do a lot of, if I can get this to click instead of, this is my own clicker, so I probably want to have this to work, but it doesn't matter. I can do it like this. Um, I do a few things. I also do Singularity University in the Netherlands and QS Europe Amsterdam. Um, for some reason it won't play the slide, but that's why I might not be the best guy for doing slides, because normally I do tabs. There we go. So these are the things that sort of made it happen for me. These are trends that are in this, you know, in this ecosystem happening at the same time, apparently. So at the time that mobile got better, we also got this world of do-it-yourself. Um, so I have this slide that I always talk about, and I probably don't have to really um, talk a lot about, you know, this audience is a very, I think, a very knowledgeable audience about what happens in the world around us. But seeing the trend of do-it-yourself and peer-to-peer -peer in different parts in the world really helps you understand that this quantified self movement is not something that is only happening in a small portion of the world and it's only sort of self-contained. It's really something that ties into quantify or the, the movements that are, are revolutionizing like, you know, manufacturing, energy, transportation. You can name actually, I think, almost everything and you can see examples of projects that are revolutioning um, that space. Um, so my question was then, if that happens for all these, what is the you know what is the thing that happens for for health? Kevin Kelly said that with QS we are we are working on on senses and new ways of self-expression. So um, a few years ago at one of the first conferences, he was defining that concept of like um, there's a North Pole. It's called. It's a bracelet with 64 servo motors in it, and when you move around, it's actually vibrating on the direction of north and when you take it off after we after wearing it for a while you actually keep that sensation of knowing where the north is um, there's people with with magnet implants so this is sort of the point i rather talk about things that i can show on slides is you know i'm seriously considering this there's actually another project on kickstarter where you have an rfid chip in your hand and you can implant that and you can use it to unlock your phone start your bike open your doors anything um, it's pretty safe now. It's glass encapsulated, that chip. And this one actually is a real tiny magnet shiver. So it's, it's a really tiny piece of a magnet. And your body starts encapsulating that. Um, and what you feel, and you might have seen the guys over there 
uh, that had the EMG sensing device, so you can feel electronic inf interference. You can actually feel that if you have a magnet in your finger. So it is sort of a sixth sense or another sense that we don't have, but we can actually make that happen. Um, there's people going as far, I don't know if you've been looking at this guy, but there's a guy called Tim Cannon, and looking at biohacking, which is, I think, a very interesting addition that Timo and Miko did with QS, taking it a, a, a step further, so to say, and also talk about body hacking, about food and so on. But this do-it-yourself body hacking, and literally body hacking, results in people doing like this. This is Tim Cannon, a guy that really is sort of pushing the boundaries um, on also what's physically possible of putting in your body. So this is a device, it emits light, it has a battery, it can like log for days. It's almost as big as a hard drive. I think the form factor is completely off. I don't think it's, it's helping him a lot in, in set, sort of getting his concept across. But he's the kind of guy that said to his girlfriend in the car, if I can get better arms, sure, I cut off my arms. If they're better, why not? So there's a lot of interesting questions that follow up on that, right? Is it always good to want more? Philosophically, you can have endless debate. Do you still feel whole? Is that still you? I mean, are your arms, your new arms, still part of what you are? There's a lot of things, I think, and maybe we get to discuss some of that. Um, just a very basic intro before I want to get your opinion, because I think otherwise it's going to end up in a presentation. Something, and my phone will, phone will start vibrating somewhere during this presentation, I'm sure, because it's almost 8.36. Um, I can see if I can reload that, but the photos will come up maybe later. But this is like, for the better part of this year, I've been doing this project. So if you ever want to do QS and you think it's all basic, you know, it's all difficult stuff that you have to get the devices and the gadgets. It's about self-awareness, right? And um, self-awareness can come from many sources. And the basic source I think that everybody has now is a phone with a camera on it. So I take a picture every day at 8.36. And this actually ties in really well to the discussion just yet, is how do people look at the data that you generate and how do you look at the data you generate? So here I am starting this project, making photos somewhere early this year. This was actually initiated by a guy named Buster Benson, who's great on habit changing and definitely want to look him up if you want to research that. But he started this. 836 is a thing that he just got from a friend. There's no big story why this type of day, but it's a good time. I always normally have just eaten or uh, I'm busy eating or I'm somewhere else. Um, the first months I did this, people were telling me like, oh, wow, this is great. I mean, you're traveling to there and you're doing this and it's quite, ex your life must be exciting. That was the question, that was the idea. But if I look at these pictures, what I see is like television, television, couch, coffee at home, coffee at home, work. That's like, it's completely skewed. I have this vision that I always, you know, I always see what I probably already wanted to see or thought I was, you know, doing at the time. Of course, the pictures are arbitrary too. I take pictures of, you know, not, it's not like I, I'm, I'm getting one of these um, now called narrative clips, Memoto cameras that like, they don't judge, they just take pictures. But I still judge, you know, I might go and take a picture of Timu instead of taking a picture of the audience. So you can't see that there were a lot of people there or the other way around. Um, but this is helping me trying to figure out if there's data, uh, if, there's, if there's information in the data that I'm gathering. And I think just as with this sensor that I'm wearing, it's actually quite, uh, it's an interesting company. It's a patch which is under my, you know, on my skin actually with a very tiny chip. Um, I can show it to you later if you're interested. But it's continuously logging stuff. And what I'm interested in is like, for now, for example, my basic thing that I'm measuring is like, what is the impact of presentations and being on stage on my, you know, on my stress levels and on that. So, um, and I'm not sure if there is any, I don't have a practical question up front, but I, I do sort of measure it because if I have the data, I probably can go back. It's like what Gordon Bell, the founder of live logging did. Capture all the data as long as you want and maybe after a while you see some sense in it. At, at least I think that's the stage where a lot of these projects are. They're curious. I think the first presentation was great until, like, is the quantified self community a curious community or a utilitarian community where we go and do stuff for a specific reason? I think there's multiple layers and different people doing for different reasons. Um, 
then you got all this great stuff, right? This is always fun. You now can do nutrition tracking based on spectrometry on the wrist. Great, so you don't have to keep those nasty food diaries and write it down. Um, you can get your biome sampled. So we had the genome done, and now we can get the biome done. So that's great. Um, like I said, there's companies working on flexible electronics, so you don't have to wear stuff. You can just, you know, in the Netherlands at least, we had these chewing gum things where you had this wrap-ons where you had a you know a picture of an anchor or a duck or I don't know what then you you could wear it for a couple of days and then it wore off it's almost the same but it's now really fancy because you can measure stuff with it inside the body even so on an organ or all kinds of interesting stuff and I think this is sort of the moment so 836 is like I'm trying to figure out if I'm getting a sense for 836 because my phone starts ringing I'm not sure yet but let me just take a picture so maybe if 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 you want, you can all wave, and then we got a great wave. Yeah, great, thanks a lot. So we got that. So that's done, um, and so this 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 question is becoming increasingly like, do I get a sense of you know, do I get a sense of where radiation is, or um, uh, and and all of that is is changing and changing, going more, you know. Like, the sky is the limit, we can't, you know, uh, somebody said to me this week, like, I b strongly believe that as soon as we can think it, there's only a matter of time until we really build it. So that's why movies are such a great inspiration. You see something in a movie, you know, probably you remember Minority Report, everybody was wowed by that interface, and a few years, five, six years later, you know, we have an interface like that. I have a leap motion at home, I can you know, whirl my, my arms around and stuff happens on my computer and it seems that in some ways it is. So now I have two questions because I can tell, you know, all kinds of fancy projects maybe that are interested. But there's two questions and I did a session with Kevin Kelly at the last conference which I'd love to get your opinion because in my view QS is highly participatory so it is, it's about self but self is not me as a person that is just me and you can build a fence around it. It's me in relation to others. So it's me, for example, with my family, with a group of peers. Um, that for me is quantified self. But talk talk about definitions, and we can run, you know, we can run a full event on that. Um, my two questions are these: one, what will drive QS in the future? So try and think of what will drive QS in the in the future. So what are we doing, and what should we do more of, and what do you think should we do that is not here yet? So I'd love to get some answers. There's a throw microphone, which I always wanted to use once. Yep. So I'm very happy that finally, I, I also understood it's developed here, right? It's actually something that some started built. That's great. Um, and the second question is, what can derail this? So let me give you one example, and, and, and just not sort of to cut away the grass before you, but somebody, I think, made a very smart comment uh, in the session that we did with Kevin Kelly. What if the more effect, you know, this graph that I'm showing, 18 months, every 18 months we get, you know, double the speed, uh, we, we, can, we can, you know, shrink it to a much more level. What if, the, what if that effect stops? We all think it goes on, until, you know, infinitely. Well, actually we already know it doesn't because it's silicon based. And silicon stuff is like, there's a finite, you know, finite scale, and then you have to stop. So we have to move to bio-based uh, materials. Um, but maybe we'll be at a standstill while we get into that move, because we're not as knowledgeable about that stuff yet, but we might run into the limits of this graph much earlier than we expect. This is just one thing that can limit that. So I'm just challenging you. 